Is anybody else's allergies just killing them right now? Or maybe I'm just a weakling. What's up, nerds? Drea here. It's time for a better late than never edition of my monthly favorites, obsessions, whatever. I'm not gonna waste any time telling you guys exactly where I've been. Let's just jump right into it. We'll start with the YouTuber that I've been binge watching this month. Of course, I started watching her on Facebook Watch, but eventually I subscribed to her YouTube channel. Charlotte Dobre has technically been on YouTube since 2012. She was part of Inform Overload and is also a singer, though I haven't heard anything from her yet. Nope, I know her for her reaction videos, which she has only been doing for about a year. I just love the chaotic energy she brings to it. Also, I just love a good reaction video. Check her out if you get a chance. She will be linked in the description box below. Moving right along, I am a couple episodes behind on Attack on Titan. And that's because I am sick of it. That's right, I am sick to death of Attack on Titan and their need to stretch out this stupid, convoluted, political mess of a story. Yes, this season was way better than last, which leads me to another complaint. Hasn't 12 episodes been a season for a while? Why is it the final season part 1, 2, and now 3 in 2023? If you're not gonna just end, at least be honest about it. I'm still planning on watching it, but I want something else. I'm tired! That's too damn bad! I can only handle like one shonen series at a time. All I know is part three better actually be the final season. Or I will riot. Moving on to better things. Yashahime is still a dumpster fire, but a relatively small one. Like, there are elements of a good story here, they just get lost in the let's check in on what the characters from the original series are doing. If this story had been able to be carried by the Yashahime, then I think it might have turned out better. As it is, they often feel like side characters in their own anime. It's kind of just disappointing, but I guess I'll keep watching. Now, moving on to the good stuff. This next series has been an absolute blast to watch. Tokyo 24th Ward is an original series produced by Cloverworks, who have been hitting it out of the park with a ton of series lately. Oh, that? That, that didn't happen. It doesn't exist. The story is set in a sort of futuristic island in the Tokyo Bay called the 24th Ward. And that's all I'm going to tell you because unlike every plot synopsis online, I think that it's better to go in blind. Check it out if you have the chance. This series is actually really, really great and it has the story to back it up. Next, we'll talk about the series that has been my latest obsession. Technically, it does have an anime adaptation, but it's not very good, so we're just not gonna talk about it. Alice in the Country of Hearts by now defunct team Quinn Rose has been all I've wanted to talk about, think about, and cosplay is coming. So this was originally a visual novel released in Japan in 2007. Have I played it? Yes. Well, I've played about 15 minutes of it because unlike my favorite visual novel, Amnesia Memories, this one is ultra dialogue heavy and I keep falling asleep. Also, I've already read the backstory in the manga. Basically, the story follows Alice Liddell going to Wonderland, known in the first visual novel and also the first volumes of the manga as the Country of Hearts. So the twist in this version is, um, what's a family friendly YouTube safe way of saying this? Um, what if all of the other characters were hot and they loved Alice? a lot and also they all have weapons yeah <laughs> yeah it's a little predictably otome but i love this series all the characters are well defined and beautifully over designed the ships not only explore the suitor but also different aspects of alice's character and i just love a good harem I've only read the first three volumes of the first manga, which follows the Blood Ship. I've also read the Julia Ship, which is my second favorite, and I've read a bunch of the Clover books. But I've read the two Elliot ships, the D and Dumb ships, which are possibly ewy, depending on your tolerance for anime stuff. 
and I've read a couple of the Ace ships and my personal favorite, four volumes of Boris. I also bought the Grey ship, but the art sucks. It's the only book I own and I wish I hadn't wasted $15 on it. Anyway, if any of this sounds interesting to you, go check them out in your local library. They're definitely worth looking for, but it's going to be a journey. But have fun going down the rabbit hole. So I talked about that for like half the video, sorry. But we'll move on to our last thing. It's two movies that I have now been obsessed with. And they're actually kind of two sides of the same coin. A while back I saw Encanto and last week I saw Turning Red. Both of these movies are fantastic with not only great animation but great music and sound design, specifically in Turning Red. And the stories are very similar though not outwardly. And culturally they do have quite a few differences. Both are about young girls struggling to live up to their family's expectations, which as a neurodivergent former gifted kid, I relate. I will say that I enjoyed Turning Red a little bit more because of the setting, but these are both movies that, if you haven't seen, you're really missing out. I won't say any more because it'll be best to go in blind, especially with Turning Red, my new favorite Pixar movie. Also, Disney, what are you waiting for? You've done like every other culture. Give us our black culture movie. Just do it. You're afraid, because Princess and the Frog, aren't you? That's that's fair. I don't really like Princess and the Frog, but come on. What are you waiting for? So that'll do it for today. I hope you liked today's video, and let me know in the comments below what you've been watching this last month. Or you can just say hi. I like reading comments. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell so you're notified when I decide to actually get out of bed and record a video. That's the hardest part of this for some reason. <laughs> also, please check out my Insta where I post like twice a week and also my TikTok where I post whenever I feel the spirit move me. Please have a great rest of your day, week, month, and year and I'll catch you guys later. Bye! This hairstyle was a mistake for this video. I was moving my hair out of my face the entire time. I'm gonna go drink some tea and go to bed. No, I'm not gonna go to bed. It's like six o'clock in the evening. I need to go do some dishes. Do some adult stuff.